So many interpretations seen in the book of Revelation. So much confusion. As long as the apocalyptic imagery of the Bible is seen through the glasses of allegory, countless numbers of competing personal interpretations surface. There must be a better way. The Bible shouldn't be this confusing. These sentiments could describe the frustration of millions of Christians on the European continent during the 16th century. The Reformation came to Europe in full force and Rome no longer had a monopoly on religious thinking. The orthodox amillennialism of Rome was being challenged by new ideas coming from Reformation theologians. These Protestant theologians may have spiritualized the millennium like their Roman Catholic counterparts, but their application of apocalyptic imagery was decidedly anti-Catholic. Some of the early reformers also believed that they were standing on the precipice of the third age of the Holy Spirit, envisioned by Joachim of Fiori. One thing the Reformationist theologians all agreed upon was their belief that the Roman papacy was the Antichrist. They even identified the Turks who threatened Europe as being Gog of Magog, in league with the Antichrist of Rome. Reformation theology mainly used the historicist method of interpreting the book of Revelation while Roman Catholic theologians viewed the book through allegorical glasses. This brings up a logical question. What is Christian historicism? Historicism is a school of interpretation which views the apocalyptic imagery of Daniel and Revelation as descriptive of literal historical events seen during the church age especially in relation to the struggle between the true Christian faith and religious church apostasy. Now we come to the crux of the conflict. Who is the true church? From a reformationist point of view, they were the true church because they renounced the apostasy of the papal antichrist and embraced the simplicity of the Bible. Rome did not agree with this application of scripture. According to ancient tradition and religious precedent set by Augustine of Hippo, the great church of Rome was the true church, while the reformists were heretics in league with Antichrist. Antichrists could be seen everywhere, from papal Rome to the heretical reformationists to various kings and bishops, one could scarcely move without stumbling over an antichrist. No wonder the people were confused. The apocalyptic confusion on the European continent was especially true on English soil. The sarcasm of Bishop John Jewell of the 16th century clearly proves this point. He said, There is none, neither old nor young, neither learned nor unlearned, but he hath heard of Antichrist. Millennium expectations grew in England until they reached their apex in the 1640s. By then, England was drunk on prophecy. Millennium fever was everywhere. In the first part of the 17th century, nearly everyone considered the Pope the Antichrist. This image would change after 1640, with the Puritans designating the bishopric of the Church of England as Antichrist also. Within a few short years, 
the more radical element of the Puritans accused even the Puritan leadership and their entire political structure as being the Antichrist. Antichrists were everywhere. Millennium expectations often grow during times of social upheaval because the disenfranchised of society clothe their pain in apocalyptic hope. The 16th and 17th centuries in England was such a time. During these centuries, English society witnessed the severing of Catholicism from the Protestant direction of England, and they also witnessed the bloody persecution of both Protestants and Catholics by competing monarchs. The Reformation came to England, and the Protestant Church of England came to power when King Henry VIII pulled all Christian congregations under the authority of the crown and severed ties with Rome. He declared himself the supreme head of the Church of England, not the Pope. It wasn't long before a splinter group formed in England who thought that the English Reformation did not go far enough. This group politicked for a more complete apostolic expression in the Church of England. This group was known as the Puritans. The Puritans were reformers who sought to bring the Church of England to a state of purity that would represent the Church at the time of Christ. The Puritans wanted to strip away from the Church all appearance of Roman Catholic conformity. Their reforms were political, and they sought to change the Church of England and the Crown into the Millennium Kingdom of God on Earth. The early Puritans were in agreement with continental reformers who interpreted the Book of Revelation from a historical perspective. They viewed the millennium as a past event in church history that ranged from the time of Constantine in the 4th century to the 14th century. These Puritans earnestly believed that the end of the world could happen any day. They tended to calendarize current events into their view of apocalyptic prophecy but their calculations were based more on the sibling oracles and the predictions of Joachim of Fiori than on biblical exegesis. In the 1620s, among the Puritans, the historical millennium began to morph into the idea of a future millennium. Even though this idea was labeled heresy by mainline reformist theologians, the theory of a future millennium grew in popularity mainly due to the influence of the German theologian Johann Alsted, who predicted that the millennium would begin in 1694. This shift in millennium thinking caused a split in the Puritan political movement by 1630. The competing factions were those who believed in a past millennium and those who maintain futurist beliefs. The merger of religion, eschatology, and politics turned the Puritans into a potent political voice in English politics. The Puritans aligned with Parliament against the monarchy who strongly supported the Church of England. In the 1640s, this antagonism between Parliament and King Charles I came to a boiling point that eventually resulted in three civil wars, the execution of the king, and a military dictatorship under Oliver Cromwell. The central issue that ignited these civil wars was the religious political doctrine known as the divine right of kings that advocated the divine right of royal absolutism. Both sides of these English civil wars 
clothed their political agenda in apocalyptic rhetoric with charges of Antichrist. The most radical of these millennial Puritans were the fifth monarchists, who believed in a geopolitical theory built upon the second chapter of the book of Daniel. They insisted that Nebuchadnezzar's dream man symbolized four future kingdoms of Assyria, Persia, Greece, and Rome that would have world dominance. This interpretation was not new to apocalyptic literature of their day but they added a new twist to the interpretation. They believed that all these kingdoms would be destroyed during the progression of history, but at the end of time, world government would be replaced by a kingdom of God and His saints. This amalgamation between God and His saints would form the fifth and final monarchy. Of course, they believed that this monarchy would begin in England and they would be the saints. The fifth monarchists were strong supporters of the military dictatorship of Oliver Cromwell. When Cromwell died, their fervor did not wane. They became more radical and attempted to bring about the end of the world through armed insurrection. They were defeated in battle and they faded away in the 1660s. Millennium fever caused considerable confusion and bloodshed in England for nearly two centuries. The allegorical method of interpretation fostered by amillennialism was strained to the breaking point by political rhetoric and historical millennialism. A new eschatology would emerge in the 18th century that would alter the course of apocalyptic thinking until the early part of the 20th century, and that theory is post-millennialism. <laughs>